Hey there, marketing analysts and marketing researchers. Uh, in this brief video, we're going to look at some issues regarding percentage reporting in pivot table analysis. This is a slight extension of our previous discussion related to building and interpreting pivot tables in Excel. So to motivate today's example, uh, there is an Excel file data set here of Facebook posts uh, each row representing some summary information about the uh, reach and engagement and the type of Facebook post from a popular cosmetics brand. Uh, this is real data, but I don't know the actual cosmetics brand. Now, as an example here, this is uh, for, for Nivea, we can see that this was a post that had 23 likes, got two comments and a share. And we also noticed that it used images. So if we look over here at this data set, we have 500 total Facebook posts. We can see that some of that information is replicated, right? We can see comments, likes, shares. We also have some additional, uh, additional insights that's provided by the Facebook analytics platform. Now for our purpose, we are just gonna focus on trying to do some very basic summary reporting about the nature of the posting habits of this cosmetics brand. Specifically, we're just gonna look at the type of Facebook post they made, whether it was a photo, status update, or a link. And we're also gonna look at rather the rate at which the brand is using organic posts versus paid ad posts. So let's go ahead and jump right into our pivot table. Okay. If you look at the upper left here, I've already generated the Excel pivot table using the same setup approach that we always have to build a pivot table, showing our organic versus paid ad in the columns. You can see the columns are selected here over in our pivot table setup. The type, link, photo, status, or video in our rows, and that's represented here. And then finally, we just wanted a count to start off with of the total number of posts uh, made. I already mentioned this data set had 500 observations. So what we used for the values here was actually any one of these columns would have been suitable so long as it had valid observations inside of it. In my particular case, I used the page total likes a column. And importantly, I set it to count, right? I, by default, usually Excel assumes you want a summation. And I, I didn't want a summation. I just wanted a simple count. So even now, just looking at this simple pivot table, we can come to some very uh, quick intuitive conclusions. For example, the most common post type was an organic photo Facebook post by this beauty brand, since 307 is a large percentage of these 500. Now, what I want to look think about a little more carefully is that typically when we're reporting quantities of things, we often don't keep them in just raw count format. We usually think about how ways to report these in some sort of uh, percentage basis. So we can do that quite easily in pivot tables. We simply go from the count over here, click on it, and there's a couple different ways to get to this setting, but I'm using the little arrow here. Go to value field settings, and in my options, I'm going to simply show my values as percentage of grand total. And percent of grand total, sure enough, now our basis of those 500, that's the denominator. And now we can see everything on a percentage basis. So those 307, I hope I have that number right, I already forgot. We can say that 61% of all of the posts were photos and organic. Easy peasy. However, there's other times where showing the overall grand total percentage isn't the best choice. It depends on our analysis. Let's go back to that setting again. If we go back to our show values as, we'll notice that we have the option of not only showing percent of grand total, we can also show it as a percent of column total. And what we see here is now each column has its own unique basis, right? Each column is 100%. So we're using that raw number as the denominator for organic. And then we're using whatever that 
raw count was for paid ads to calculate these values here. And of course, if we have the option to do a column percentage, we also have the option to do a row percentage. Now we can see over here that for the link type of posting, the number of the quantity of those link posts is now the denominator for that particular row in these two percentages add up, of course, to 100%, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, easy enough to set our percentages, but why might we want to set our percentages differently? Very typically, um, people newer to basic descriptive statistic analysis don't think through why they report something on a particular percentage basis that they do. So next, let's walk through a couple cases. What we're going to do here is I've already built out a bunch of different tables. And notice I say these are not pivot tables. And what I mean by that is I've actually taken the raw values and uh, brought them typed in over. Like, so no longer, there's no longer an interaction screen. But of course, you could build all of these values using a pivot table. I've also made a very simple chart to the right hand side um, that simply reflects the internal data. So if you look here, organic photo is 307 observations, organic, the blue bar, photo, the second category, 307, right? So these numbers should all summate to 500, or they do sum up to 500, of course. So what kind of typical questions do we ask you know, when we report things in raw counts? Well, very simple questions, right? Like what type of Facebook content and ad type was the most common for us to post or least common? I mean, just simply looking at these values, we can see that video ads were actually relatively rare for this particular cosmetics brand. And so were links, particularly maybe paid links. Now, let's take a look at the grand total version. Here, we see the exact same values just now reported on a percentage basis. And sure, if you just glance up to the top and then to the bottom here, we can see that the bar chart is exactly the same in terms of its relative size, right? But now we're just reporting where every value is divided by 500, right? It's the grand total. And we, rep we answer questions the exact same way using the grand total percentage. I mean, the kind of things you think about whether you're reporting just raw counts or, or grand total percentage is the same stuff. It's just a matter of convenience, right? You can imagine we're like, right now we're only looking at eight different possible combinations, but you can build pivot tables with many more categories or even additional categorization variables. You might have dozens and do dozens of potential bars or uh, cells within inside your pivot table. A percentage basis can usually make it a little easier for you to understand the relative size of these values. So the thing that we could easily intuit in this simple data set here that organic photos were most common, now we understand the exact percentage. We can also see here less than 1% of uh, all Facebook posts were organic video ads and less than 1% were paid ad videos. So this is just a more convenient way often to report the kind of things that we might do with total counts. Now let's get a little deeper. Let's take a look at our row percentage basis. Now first, you should notice that the way that we showed the chart has changed. Now we're choosing to show a stacked bar chart. Typically a good approach for presenting this type of um, percentage. Now why would that be? Well keep in mind, if we're using the row percentage, each individual category in our rows is now its own individual basis, right? Each row summates to 100%. And if that's true, that would imply that each stacked bar here must necessarily, of course, add up to 100%, right? Each is its own whole, in other words. Now, what kind of advantage does this type of approach give us? Well, this allows us to compare the relative rate of things occurring amongst the different four categories of Facebook post type. So for example here, I can observe quite easily whether I'm looking at the data in the table or the data visualization version, I can say that, hey, when it comes to link style Facebook posts, photo style Facebook posts, or just status update posts, we're typically doing about the same rate of organic posts to paid posts. 
notice that the percentages are relatively comparable. We might notice that for the status posts, we have a slightly higher percentage of organic posts relative to paid posts. But then over here, when it comes to video posts, we might note that, hey, actually, we're doing at a much higher rate amongst video posts, we're relying on paid ads. I mean, we can't make any conclusions whether or not this is good or bad. We're just simply describing the posting behavior of this particular cosmetics brand. So this allows us to see sort of relative differences in rates of things very easily, and it's very convenient for that. Now, what does it hide though? Now, the one thing that we'd have to be careful about is when we see this drastic difference in percentage amongst the video ads, if we're not mindful, we might forget that there's actually very few posts there at all. Remember, let's go back to our raw really quick. Remember, there was only seven total posts out of 500. So maybe we should be a little cautious about making any drastic conclusions about the relative posting rate of video ads, um, I'm sorry, organic versus paid ads amongst videos, because if we had merely one or two additional posts to consider, well, these percentages, since the denominator is based only on a number of seven, could change drastically. Okay, And in the exact same way, we can report as a column basis. And again, we use a stacked bar chart in this column basis. Now things are a little different for us because now that we're looking at things in a column, well, each of these groups have four different categories they could belong to. Again, same underlying data, just reporting it using a different basis. So now we're comparing the rate of our, our posting type behavior relative to our organic posts or our paid ad Facebook posts. And what we see here is much the same what we've seen before, just presented a little differently. And we can say, hey, you know, when it comes to whether we're talking about organic posts or paid ad posts, there really isn't much different difference in the type of content that we're posting. Notice that the percentages in the blue down here are basically equal. Same for our orange bar for photographs and similarly for status and video. There's a tiny bit of difference here, but we'd probably be hesitant, hesitant to make any broad sweeping conclusions about the posting behavior of this cosmetics brand. So what's our takeaway from this little tutorial? One, it's very easy to adjust the percentage basis that we're reporting on. Secondly, we need to understand the type of reporting that we want to do or the type of analysis that we want to do that influences and guides which of the reporting basis is most appropriate for us. A marketer would almost never choose to report percentages all four ways. In the spirit of trying to be compact and focused with, a, with their analysis, the marketing analyst who is analyzing this data would carefully think through about which one of these approaches probably makes the most sense for the audience that they want to communicate these results to. Okay. Well, everybody, that's it for now. And look forward to continuing our chat about pivot table and descriptive analysis later.